This is YSM Sports Media. I want to thank you for all your love and support. Really appreciate it. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and click the notification button for all future content. Anthony Young, what's good, man? Eh? What's good? What you got going on today? Nah, man, just getting back in the flow of it with my trainer, Rasheem Jefferson, aka Boxing Rail. You know, put a good, good first, put a good first day in, man. We trying to get back in the swing of things. Ready for a uh, big 2021? This your uh, your first day back in what a couple weeks? Yeah, I haven't. Last time I was in the gym, I came Monday. I came Monday, but I ain't come yesterday. But before that, last time I was in the gym was about two weeks ago. I sparred Jerron Ennis. How's he looking? Uh, make a long story short, very very good. <laughs> good. Now the last time you was in the ring, uh, you stopped Saddam Ali. Yeah. Um, what's the situation with the layoff? Like, when when can we expect you back? Uh, early 2021, man. Yeah. But the, uh, I you know I was offered a couple fights. I felt like they wasn't trying to give me the trying to give me the money that I was asking for. And you know, what I mean, Dude. I guess Golden Boy just released me out of my contract. They asked, I was scheduled to fight Antonio Orozco March 28th of this year, and he heard he injured his ankle or something. I guess running and. After that, I called them and they said I was released. So, I mean, here we are. Okay. Now, you're a complete free agent. Like, you, you're open to free agent management and promoter or just, just promoter? Just promoter. I got a manager, Carlos Rosario. He's young, upcoming, hungry manager. So, you know, that's who I'm with right now. Secure the bag management. And I ain't got no promoter, so. Call me. Yeah, that's that's weird because you come off of stopping a former world champion, arguably your biggest win of your career. And not, not arguably the biggest win of my it's career. It's the biggest win of your career. And then, you know, the layoff. Like, normally they would have you right back in the ring. So. Yeah, I was uh, right after that fight. They wanted me to fight. I fought in May. They wanted me to fight in June. And I had just became a Muslim. So that was going to be my June. It was going to be my first month of Ramadan. And I literally, two fights back to back, I had a fight at the end of March, and then I fought in May, May 5th. So it was like, I really care. I, I wasn't going to put my body through that with what did be in my first Ramadan. Then trying to fight right after two fights back to back. So I turned it down, but then they offered that same fight. But they wasn't, I mean, they were offering me. They had, in the contract they gave me, I had minimums, and everything was negotiable. So they tried to give me the minimum, and I wanted tried to negotiate more and they wasn't willing to budge. So, I mean, I ain't gonna just fall for anything. You fall, you gotta stand for something. If not, you gonna fall for anything. And at the end of the day, like, I ain't poor. I mean, of course, who don't want money? But I'm not just gonna take a fight because I'm desperate for money because I'm not. I'm blessed. Now, in your return bout, are you looking for just a tune up or are you ready to jump back in there with, with Big Fish? Well, like I said, I got one of the best trainers in the game, and he gonna prepare me for whatever, whether it be a tune-up or a name or not I me mean, a title eliminator, whatever. So we ready for all the smoke. But I mean, realistically speaking, I don't, I honestly don't care what type of fight it is. I just need to fight. Okay. All right, in, in your division, there's a big fight this Saturday. Danny Garcia is going up against Earl Spence. Have you ever sparred Danny? I didn't. Few of Danny's camps. Okay. What's your prediction for that fight? Me personally, um, I might sound crazy, but I think I think Danny can can win by stoppage. Uh, not saying that he's gonna knock him out because I'm not. I've never really seen Earl get hit flush that much, other than uh, the Sean Porter fight. And from what I've heard, Sean Porter is not really the biggest puncher, but. Uh, I know early in his career, I followed Earl a lot, and he fought this uh, African guy, Manuel Larte, and he got clipped one round at the end of a round, but the round was probably about 10 seconds left in the round, and I, I seen how I react to it, and then seeing how he was reacting to Sean Porter punches, I feel like if Danny is able to land them same shots, it could be a short night. Not to say that he's going to knock him out, but, you know, with the, the car action and all that, I just want to see how his face pulls up when Danny starts landing that leather. And I mean, no, not taking nothing away from Earl Spence because he's a straight dog. He went in the UK when, at a time where I wasn't really too big on him. I thought he was good, but you know, 
I looked at it like, man, he got Al Heyman behind him to give him all the right fights. He's doing what he's supposed to do. If I had this money behind me, I'll be the same way. Mm. But he went over there and bullied the bully and steamrolled Earl uh, Kell Brook. So with that being said, like he he's a dog. He's a handful. I'm curious to see how it is. Like I mean, not saying that the accident had any effect on him because physically they see Pat like Danny uh, Dad said he passed all the tests. Uh, the medical examinations and no brain bleeding or brain swelling or anything like that. So clearly he's 100%, but I'm curious to see how his face is going to hold up once Danny start landing that leather. And Danny punches very, very hard. Is he one of the biggest punches you ever shared the ring with? The biggest puncher I've ever shared the ring with. And I've shared the ring with bigger guys. I've been in the ring with light heavyweights. Uh, Danny is by far the, the hardest, just pure puncher that I've been in the ring with. Don't get boots is, boots punches hard too, but he's also physically strong. So it's a com he's a combination of both, but as far as just punching, Danny's by far the hardest puncher I've been in the ring with. Okay. Now, what about me when we <laughs> I ain't never spar you, and you can't crack an egg. <laughs> If Spence gets past Danny, is that a fight that you're looking forward to in the future? I mean, I would love, of course, anybody, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, but realistically speaking, they're not. Like, I'm outside, I'm, I want to say like around 18, between 15 and 20, unless they just looking for him to have a, a I guess, in the boxing world, an easy layoff, like that's the only way that fight gonna happen. I would have to beat some big names in order to get that fight. So, I mean, but you always wanna fight the best if you wanna consider yourself the best. So yeah, mm. that, that wouldn't be a fight I was opposed to. Okay, thanks, Ian, I appreciate it. You already.